Manchester aiming at a Sheffield double. Remember, they beat Sheffield United 4-0 in the last round. Our commentator at Hillsborough, Martin Tyler. It was against Sheffield Wednesday in 1967 when Billy Bonds began his inspirational West Ham career. Wednesday's Carl Bradshaw wasn't even born then, but the 18-year-old striker is very much part of the present FA Cup scene with significant goals in the third and fourth rounds. That calamitous injury to Ian Knight means Nigel Worthington becomes a third central defender. The two fullbacks will push up into midfield to support Gary Megson and Gary Shelton. Up front, Lee Chapman is suspended, Mark Chamberlain injured, so in comes 19-year-old David Hurst. For West Ham, no Alvin Martin or Paul Hilton, they're both injured. Steve Warford is at left-back with George Harris now in midfield to compensate for the absence of Alan Devonshire. It's a midfield into which Stuart Robson has settled very quickly. And at the sharp end, the double act of Tony Cotty and Frank McAvenny. The referee is Howard Taylor from Oadby in Leicestershire. And the majesty of Hillsborough enhanced now by the covering of the cop end at the cost of half a million pounds. It's a perfect setting, rich in FA Cup tradition. The pitch is flat, softened because today is the warmest day of this week in South Yorkshire, though there is a firm strip down towards the near touchline. West Ham attacking the cop end in the first half. This is Pike. Scotty McAvenny ahead of him. And he well too long. Mason. David Hurst who made the tackle on Jeff Pike and worked back well. But then ran out of idea. Ward straight into Sterling. <laughs> that could have gone anywhere, but it's found Glenn Snowden. Signed from Barnsley for £200,000 last summer and is still really trying to bed into the team. But what a good acquisition Laurie Madden has been here, a free transfer. And now at 31, fully established in the first division. Robson given license to maraud forward for West Ham from midfield into the run of Cotty McAvenny second time it counts West Ham in front ten minutes there have been suggestions in this part of the world that Frank McAvenny has been found out this season his second in England and that's why the goals have dried up but he's hit a much better spell recently this was splendid approach work by West Ham. But Wednesday might wonder whether McAvenny was offside as it reached him from Cotty, but the goal stands. Robson, Cotty, McAvenny, goal. A splendid start for the team who were knocked out of the FA Cup here in the sixth round last season. Bradshaw. Harris could only get it away as far as Sterling, but no problem in the end for West Ham. An examination here of the loss of confidence in recent league games from the home side. Robson. Shoved by Worthington and McAvenny now to get enough goals to catch the eye of Andy Roxburgh and get back his place in the Scotland squad. It's a good one to miss last Wednesday, that's for sure. And Ward shot. Opening up in the air off the line defending of Hurst and Megson. Cotty turning Worthington. Could easily have been two and should have been really. Stuart Robson with the goal gaping. But Wednesday tentative again. With Worthington rather easily tricked by Cotty and then Robson getting it bouncing just in front of him and high over the bar.
when he should have scored. It would be foolish, though, for John Lyle's players to be carried away simply because they've settled the quicker and lead 1-0. Wednesday are nothing if not committed opponents. And here's Mel Sterling. And it's Pike and Paris who can't clear. Sterling. Finally, Wolford did halt him, but Paris was composed, and it's another corner. Came off McAvenny, that's Gary Shelton. <laughs> Phil Parks, who still finds time to smile in the midst of a cup tie battle. He might not have seen it until late. It was McAvenny trying to avoid doing exactly what he did, which was flicking it on, and Shelton who came in. Marwood has looked the most inventive forward player for Wednesday so far. Bradshaw, good flick. Hurst, still got something to do here. Snowden is there. Snowden, beaten away by Parks. Only scored once since he came here from Doncaster Rovers. Where he was quite a prolific marksman. It's a nicely timed break from Snowden to get into the area. Some nifty footwork, but the angle was against him when it came to the shot. Bradshaw, nicely taken by Marwood. Promise here for Wednesday. Shelton! through the ball long Bradshaw played his part Marwood too and Shelton had seen the possibilities all the way and was perfectly placed to finish it all off advantage played and here's Ward and that will be a free kick fell into the area but was fouled outside and Mark Ward sometimes burns a short fuse Bronze arm raised by the far post McAvenny making his run and a decoy but Ward sent it into the cop That all started a couple of minutes earlier. And McAvenny and Bonds are trying initially to calm things down, but arms still raised. Now Howard Taylor will call out the guilty parties here, and Mark Ward is certainly one of them. And he'll want to speak to Glenn Snowden as well. This is how it happened. Tempers still high. And Snowden went across in retaliation to what was just the competing for the ball. And both players had their names taken. And that is the end of the punishment. And indeed, it is half time. Well, Frank McAvenny gave West Ham a splendid start, but perhaps in his mind, answered some of the critics in the Yorkshire area of his poor scoring record this season. He gave West Ham the lead. 
for five minutes from the interval. Gary Shelton caught West Ham cold following a long throw from Glyn Snowden. And it's Sheffield Wednesday 1, West Ham 1 at half-time and a great deal of football left in this fifth-round cup tie. The last time Sheffield Wednesday beat a first division side was Newcastle United back on December the 21st. The last eight league games, only three points. So morale at times, particularly amongst the supporters here, has been a little bit low in recent weeks. But that goal from Gary Shelton will have boosted the spirits. In from Marwan. It's an excellent cup tie. Played in a stadium worthy of the match. And here's McAvenny looking to curl it. And Hodge just not really let it slip from his grasp, but seemed to lose concentration on the save, encouraging Cotty to come in. But McAvenny's effort was a clever one. And Tony Cotty just had a look at the ball as it seemed to be rolling free. Shelton first to the loose ball, which came off McAvenny. Here's Laurie Madden, the Londoner in the Sheffield Wednesday ranks. Sterling. Marwood. And Sterling too strong for Walford. And Park snaked out an arm and hauled it in to his relief. His 19th season of football at this level, and he needed all his nerve and experience then to rectify the damage. has lost a boot in the power he got to his pass and so Cotty has to rely on help from Robson he's had plenty of that this afternoon and Hodge had to hang on it is a replay of Wednesday night at Upton Park where the two teams were already scheduled to meet in the first division. Gary Shelton equalised Frank McAvenny's opener for West Ham. The two goals in the first half. West Ham halfway towards avenging last year's six-round defeat here. And Sheffield Wednesday, incidentally, haven't won at Upton Park since August 1967, the day a certain Billy Bonds made his West Ham debut. It's Sheffield Wednesday 1, 